Hey everybody, I'm Mary and this is my simple cottage life. Hey everybody well I promised you a story unfortunately this one's gonna be true you know I rented my house next door to a widow and her 21 year old son she had contacted me on Facebook she got me a long story about how she had become a widow several years before and she had to move from North Texas to South Texas to live in a home that belonged to her sister. And her sister lived on the same property right next door. Remember that, that's important. She didn't live there but a few months. Her sister decided she was gonna sell the whole kit and caboodle and move off. Remember that. So this woman, that I'm talking about, my tenant, was homeless. She and her son said she was homeless. They lived in her truck, lived in motels. They had three dogs. Oh gosh, I felt so sorry for her, I really did. So she had come out, she saw the property, and she would send me a message saying, I'm praying that you are going to let us live there. So I said, yes, come on, you can do that. So they moved in. And I haven't had anything but problem after problem after problem with them. It just, this woman to have been homeless was the biggest diva I've ever seen seen in my life. And also a Karen. Totally a Karen. Well, just to give you a clue, I was having the roof redone over there and I had a young man up on the roof. And it was it was uh, hot. Extremely hot. He was roofing the house. And her son, remember, is 21, stepped out the front door and screamed, get off my roof, you M ever now the roofer didn't make that up because he didn't even know there was another there was a male in the house he had no clue so he knew because he said it was a man's voice first of all he said get off my roof it's not his roof it's mine he's repairing the roof because of something they did now here we go into that story Right after they moved in, they had a company come out and install uh, some kind of satellite dish up on the roof. They didn't even ask me. They didn't even ask, is it okay that we put this great big huge satellite dish on your roof and drill down through the roof into the attic in order to bolt it down. They didn't even ask me. I would have said, no, put it in the yard. Don't put it in the roof. Well, about that time, we had the most rain you ever saw then. Now, I wish we had some rain, but unbeknownst to me, over a period of time, that roof leaked. It leaked like a, open, like a dam had been opened. And all that water rushed into the attic. And then um, seeped through the bottom of the attic onto the ceiling above where it had been installed. And that was that boy's room, the 21-year-old's the room. That ceiling was, I don't know what it was made of. It was an old ceiling for sure. 
but it was tiles, individually tiles, and they were made out of something almost like chalk. I've never seen anything like them before. And all of that absorbed that water and came crashing down. Half of the ceiling, right underneath where they install that satellite dish, came down. You can't fix it when the boy's in it. You gotta have somebody come in and put up sheetrock and tear the whole ceiling out, do the whole ceiling. And he had that room absolutely loaded down with his big screen TV in that little bedroom and his game consoles and all that kind of stuff. Couldn't fix it, not until they move. So anyway, after that, there was an electrical problem. I had that fixed. There was a plumbing problem. I had that fixed. Every time there was some kind of problem, I had it done. I had it done immediately. It wasn't even three days till I had somebody out there on it because it's my house. It's an investment. It's something that I own. It's property. It's it's worth something, for heaven's sake. You don't just say, well, forget it. I wanted to take care of my own property. So a couple of weeks ago, we're going to fast forward. A couple of weeks ago, they had an electrical problem again, and I called Jared out, and he worked on the problem turned out it was nothing but a breaker. I remember her texting me, the power was out. I said, did you check the breaker? She said, no. And then she texted back, where is it? I said, it's in your son's room on the wall. You can't miss it. You know, really, this woman, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm assuming she's probably 50 or maybe even younger, I don't know. But she needs to really kind of learn to do a few things for herself instead of a, the, the power sound. Well, have you checked the breaker? No, where is it? Really, lady? Anyway, Jared came out, it was a breaker. He had to replace a breaker. And that cost me some money there. Okay, three days later, she texts me. The door to the outside has this huge gap in it. I can't close the door. So Brian and I went over there and looked at it. I'll tell you in a minute what he said and what I thought. But then Jared came out and he went over there with me and we stood there and looked at the door and he opened up the screen and looked at that door and he said this door's been kicked in yeah sure has not only that but the screen door that was over the wooden door had a long slash all the way across so that you could put your hand through and use the latch to unlock the screen door so you can open it up and kick the door in. That's exactly what it was. She was angry with him because he found an internet girlfriend and he had planned to move away with her and she, I remember her telling me she just didn't know what she was going to do and that he talked to her in the worst way possible. <laughs> well, he learned it from her. He learned all that language from her. Here's my note she left me. I didn't say anything. I didn't say who kicked the door in? Because I knew who kicked the door in. He came home. I heard the noise. I didn't know what it was. 
The doors were locked, both of them. She's mad at him because he went off with his girlfriend. He came home, he slashed the screen, he kicked the door in so he could get in the house because he was mad. Now remember, he's the same guy that hit one of my cats, Mr. Biggie Boy, in the head with a rock and he threatened to shoot him. He, he's a hothead. He's a dangerous little boy to be 21 years old and have that kind of mindset that you would throw a rock and hit a cat in the head that's not bothering you at all, or that you would shoot my cats, my cats that I have out here. He threatened to shoot them because they came over on his side of the house. My cats, to my knowledge, have never gone over there, but he. He seems to think that they are bothering him at his house, his roof, his house, his rule. So I'm mad about the door. I am. I'm mad about the door. I spent a lot of money on that house over there. But this woman who couldn't appreciate anything you, you had a place to sit down and eat your breakfast. You didn't have to use the dashboard on your truck for a table. You didn't have to use the seats in your truck for your bed. You had central heat and air. You had a roof over your head, a new roof over your head. So I've had it with her. I've had it with her hothead son. I think I told you about the time I was trying to talk to you about something. She was in her truck and came up and I stopped her and I was standing out there talking to her. She goes, whatever. Rolled up the window and drove away with me standing in the driveway. Who does that? It's my house. Who does that kind of thing? Karens, divas, people who've never had anything and when they get something, they treat it like it's trash. She treated my stuff like it's trash. She wrote me a long letter and first I better go back just a bit. I sent her a certified notice to vacate. So I sent it in the mail. They came out. They tried to deliver. She wouldn't open the door. They left her a notice. They came out a couple of days later, tried to serve her. She wouldn't open the door. They left a notice. I checked. She never picked it up at the post office. Never did. But in the meantime, I had also taken a notice to quit put it in an envelope, like they tell us, a big, one of those yellow looking envelopes, taped it to her door with her name, address on it, and important notice where you can't miss it, and taped it to the outside of the door. So according to Texas law, the, I've given her 30 days notice to vacate, and the clock starts ticking the minute I put that up on her door. So they moved out. I moved out yesterday. Ah, uh, they had someone come and help them with the trailer. She wrote me this awful, awful, awful letter, y'all. Included the key. I'm not going to read the letter because it contains vile, obscene language. But what she did was attack me personally, my personal self, my, uh, my looks. I can't tell you that she called me you are the lowest of low. I'm sure your son is ashamed of you, but he would never admit it. 
She's never had a conversation with my son. How does she know what he thinks? You saw the bathroom? You are a liar and an old, wrinkled, ball face lying bee. Oh, the things that she said to me. The horrible words she used. Remember in the very beginning how she prayed to God? She totally forgot about God when she was writing this letter to me. Call me a slumlord. It's addressed to her slumlord. Well, they're out. And now let me show you the video of what they left behind. Okay, so here we go. They've left all this stuff over here. The grill, a chair she sat in all the time, pots. There's the door I had to replace. In we go. Well, so they've left this great, big, awful couch. Horrible couch. And look, it's blocking the door. You're not supposed to have furniture um, blocking an exit. I wonder what those curtains did to them that they had to do them like that. Good grief. There are holes in the walls. Gouges all over the walls. What in the world? It's going to get dark in here. I hope y'all can see there's no electricity. Had it turned off. So here's the smoke detectors I bought for this place that they, that she had a fit because I didn't have smoke detectors in here. Well, here they are, sitting right there. Right. This is the pantry. She left all of this stuff pretty much empty. Nobody wants this. I certainly don't. Lord, what a mess. What a mess. Here's that gouge she made with her giant skillet. Another one over here. This stove, you can't see it, but it's loaded in grease. I think y'all can see what I'm talking about. It's loaded in grease. The inside, I looked at it yesterday. It's totally loaded in grease. Just left junk everywhere. Left all the junk. She, she didn't want to clean up anything. She's incapable of cleaning up. Lime away. Nothing's 
Nothing's worth having. I know. Stuff up in there. Stuff up there. Junk down here. She left food. I better open that up. So it won't smell. Oh, Lord. For some reason, they pull that out from the wall. I don't know why. But here, I want to show you this. and move this out of the way. Behold, the wall of plastic bottles. Would you look at that? What in the world? What in the world? They're empty. Empty bottles. All she had to do was put them in the trash. So she left this. And all these plastic things. Left a lot of dishes, didn't she? Yeah. Perfectly good lids. All you had to, Well, here's the problem. She left them because they needed to be clean. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Oh, gosh. In here. Well, she left the broom because she didn't need to sweep. I, I can't get over it. Just can't. Well, oh, good. Bleach. <clears throat> I can certainly use that in here. All right. Here we go. In the dining room, it's going to get darker. I'm sorry. There's my piece of furniture that I left here for them to use. Fishing rods, dog gate, boxes, a great big TV. Huh. Was there a TV in the other room? No. Okay, it was right here. Some kind of whatever this is. Kind of little vacuum. Big TV. Obviously, that TV does not work or they wouldn't have left it. Loads of boxes in here. <sighs> okay. bathroom. This is pulled out from the wall. What in the world? Look at this. I don't know what could cause that. Oh, the toilet's filthy. I mean, I'm sorry to show you, but now you see what kind of condition she let her house be in. What's a coat bottle doing up there? Mm. I don't want to think about it. Oh, Lord. Oh, y'all. She spoke about mold in her letter to me. Look at the mold. Look here. She, she didn't even bother to clean the tub. Look at that right there. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I have never seen anything this filthy and nasty. She didn't even clean the bathtub. Oh no. There's my mirror. Oh my God. Oh my God. Y'all, this is toilet paper. This is used toilet paper. They didn't bother to flush it. They didn't bother to pick it, put it in a bag and dispose of it properly. It's disgusting down here in the bottom of the linen closet. Used toilet paper. Who does that? 
What animal does that? Oh my gosh. Master bedroom. She kept her dog in that, one of her dogs in this playpen. So I'll, I'll give it away to somebody. Somebody could use it for their child, I'm sure. I wonder what the heck that is all over the floor. Oh my God. What in the world? I don't even want to touch it. This is one of the air conditioners that I told them they could take the rent money and buy two air conditioners for this house. They bought the cheapest air conditioners they possibly could and installed them over here so they could have um, the rest of the money. Oh. Okay. There's, oh, by the way, there's no doors on this. There were doors. Let me get back. There were doors on this cabinet for clothes. Yeah. All right, this is her son's room. Another playpen. Here's the ceiling that fell in. Y'all remember me telling you about, well, I will tell you if I hadn't already, how that they had something installed on the ceiling and all these tiles got soaking wet because they didn't um, seal around the bolts on the <clears throat> roof. And that ceiling came crashing down. I couldn't get in here and fix it because her son was living in here. Here's another air conditioner. <laughs> Look at this, water, air just pours through here. This cheap little old bitty air conditioner in this window, cheapest she could find. Gosh, well, I'm going to take all the curtains out of this house. Every one of them, just take them out. I don't need curtains in here. Oh, here's the closet. I have no idea what's in there. Looks like just boxes. That door had been cleaned. I don't know what that is. That door had been yeah, um, painted. All these floors were shiny and just refinished, gleaming. You see the pictures of them. Y'all have seen them. Here they are. Here's what she left me with. This is what I have to get out of here, clean out of here. She appreciated nothing, absolutely nothing. Yet she lived on, in her truck, so she said, and in motels. But she called this a slum. Well, it is a slum right now, but it wasn't one. I can't get over it, y'all. Oh, I got to open this up and keep it open. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can do that. I want to keep it open, if possible. I don't want it to stink up the place. Whew. Things just throw me in. Look at this, y'all. What is this? B beer. Bush beer. Strawberry daiquiri. Well, so they're drinkers. They like the beer, don't they? Yep, they like beer. Mm-mm-mm, mm, -mm. mm, -mm, -mm. Well, I've got work to do, but I can't, can't do it all at once, you know. But she called me a slim, slumlord among other awful, disgusting, names that I wouldn't even 
think to use about another human being. Fan hadn't been cleaned since she moved in. Oh, what a mess. All right, y'all. You see the mess. My goodness.